I love gear all right. But on the job, as soon as I have to think about it, I get pissed off. During shooting, it just needs to shut up and work. So here's what we're gonna do today. Part one, rig the Ronin. All parts, exact order, two special tips. Part two, build a trigger chain. Part three, a mode for 95% of the time. My name is Mark and today we rig a Ronin for max performance. Now when's a rig a good rig? Minimal amount of parts, modular, fast assembly. This is the base for the arm that holds the Ninja. It attaches right here. This is the arm, slides on like this, fixed by a nail clamp. This part attaches to the top of the Ninja and then slides onto the arm, again tightened via a nail clamp. On the other side right there, this is just a part I use for protection of the Ronin connectors. There is better ones out there than this. That's the rig. Now here are the tips. Number one, to connect the Ninja to the Ronin, use a coiled cable. There is less chance to get stuck somewhere and in case you do get stuck, there is more give which protects the connectors and the gimbal motors. Number two, tennis grip tape. Better grip, excellent if you start to sweat. This stuff is cheap and installed and are replaced quickly. So essentially, you rig for two reasons, function and ease of use. As soon as there is more than one button to push, there's more than one opportunity to f up. So let's bypass that problem. This is a camera control cable that connects the Ronin to the camera. Install this cable with both the Ronin and the camera turned off. Then turn them both on. Otherwise the cable will not be recognized and the trigger chain won't work. Most likely you will have to turn on the feature inside your camera that allows it to be triggered from an outside source. In case of Sony cameras at least, this is how you do it. Enter the setup main menu, go to HDMI settings, turn on timecode output, rec control and control for HDMI. The camera now outputs a trigger signal for the Ninja as well as timecode over HDMI, which we will use to then trigger the Ninja. Enter the Ninja main menu, come to trigger source and select HDMI. Now the record button of the Ronin triggers the camera, which in turn triggers the Ninja via the timecode or the HDMI control. So you're getting high quality footage on the Ninja and your redundancy via the SD card of the camera. So essentially, trigger chain equals less fuck-ups. Different modes for different situations. Sports mode for fast dynamic movement, complete camera lock for straight movement, but 95% of the gimbal work is pretty basic stuff. So here's how I use my Ronin 95% of the time. Connect your Ronin to the app, user profile, M1, pan tilt, follow. Speed, low, dead band, customized, zero, zero, zero. Sensitivity, low, push mode, off. To complete this, M2 is inception mode, M3 is FPV, first person view. Same as M1, but including the roll axis. However, I almost never use Inception or FPV though. And that's all the tweaking I'm doing. I hold down M, I get sports mode. I hold down the trigger right here, I get complete camera lock. And other than that, I get slow, smooth, sensitively controllable movement. All of it on the fly. So essentially, 95% of the time, customized M1, pan tilt follow, low speed, zero, 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 dead band, low sensitivity. To recap, you rig for two reasons, function and ease of use. A good rig has the minimal amount of parts needed, is modular and quickly assembled. A trigger chain equals less f***ups. My one for all mode is a customized M1, pan tilt follow, low speed, zero dead band, low sensitivity. Now if you're interested in stepping up your game when it comes to gimbal shots, check out my Master Your Gimbal video, link in the upper right hand corner. 
If you dig the stock footage I use, check out ArtGrid and consider subscribing using the links in my video description. I get a commission which helps me out and you get two months for free. If you like the music I'm using, check out Artlist. Same deal, I get a commission that helps me run the channel and you're getting two months of Artlist for free. Should you be interested in any of the gear that I'm using, check out my kits on kit.co or the video description for gear relating to this specific video. Now, if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.